All right, so before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, FT8 and what it is. So basically, uh, FT8 is a, uh, a digital mode in ham radio, kind of like a protocol uh, that allows or is more efficient at uh, long-range HF communication uh, with weak signal. The thing about it is, even if there's a high noise floor, uh, or there's just no, a lot of noise in general, uh, FT8 really excels at really getting through, and the system is almost fully automated. So it makes getting contacts over large distances very easy and very efficient. Um, the main program that people do use for that is a WSTJT, Whiskey Sierra Tango Juliet, um, Tango dash X ray, uh, which is the program made by the people that created FV8, FT8, obviously. So uh, we're going to be using that program in this video, and uh, what you're seeing here is a, um, a program called Grid Tracker, which kind of pairs with um, the uh, WSTJT-X that um, kind of shows what grids you've worked with the program. So what you're looking at here is a, uh, a map of the past two days that I've been using FT8 from the United States, and there's a few over here as well. Um, but I just kind of wanted to talk about it before we get into it. So there's a pretty much 50% duty cycle uh, where you transmit for 15 seconds and then you receive for 15 seconds. Uh, because of this, it's very important that your computer has accurate time and uh, I've never experienced an issue with my computer being off time and that causing issues. But if you do, there's another program that you should download to kind of go with the software suit called Dimension 4. I'll provide a link for that down below. And that uh, program will make sure that your computer is on the correct time because the way that the, uh, the software works is it really needs to be um, in the correct time to enable to transmit and receive at proper intervals. So there's a few things you're going to need besides the software on the computer. Obviously, you're going to need your radio. And uh, there's a couple of uh, different bands that support FT8. Uh, and the cool thing is in software, it really tells you the frequencies. I mean, it's kind of already set up for you. I'm going to use my FT450, and what you're hearing in the background is the sound of FT8. So I'm actually on the 40 meter band right now at 7.074. And so once you have your radio, you're also going to need an interface to your computer. Now, the two types of interface, which is the audio interface uh, with audio input and output, which is really your data uh, in this case. And you also can also use a cat control from your transceiver that will tell your transceiver uh, when to transmit and when not to. Most transceivers these days come with a, uh, a digital Vox, which is what I'm using here. And although that's not the most efficient way to do it, uh, that's what I have, and it's been working pretty well for me. So as for the audio interface, I just have a uh, uh, connector here into the data part of my radio, and it runs uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jacks down to the microphone input and the, um, the headphone output of my computer. So any sounds coming through my computer is forwarded to the radio. The re one reason that's not as efficient is because it will automatically transmit if computer sounds come through the speakers. So if possible, which my cable's coming in, you should have a, um, a cat control for your transceiver. Uh, if not, to control when it's transmitting, uh, to have a little bit more uh, features in your software. So once you have your transceiver rigged up to your computer, your antenna's up, uh, we'll go ahead and get into the software side of things. So the first thing that you're going to want to open is going to be your, uh, your pro our program we mentioned earlier, the WSJT-X-Ray. And you're going to open that up and you're going to see two things here. Okay, So you're going to see your waterfall, waterfall display and you're also going to see uh, the main window here. So I'm going to walk through this here before we actually even start on the software. Uh, we're going to go to File and Settings. And there's a few things that you want to make sure it's filled out here. <clears throat> a lot of videos start and they don't really go over this. 
but I'm going to assume that it's an absolute beginner or you're just interested in what FT8 really is. But make sure you fill out this information here. And this is kind of user settings, but what I really uh, recommend is to at least have a blank line between decoding periods. You'll see what that means later. And um, you want to disable TX after sending 73. That kind of makes things a little bit more automated. You can set up your cat control here if you do have that interface to the radio. I don't have that. So the sound card, this is important. This is where your input and out output uh, audio devices are going to be. I'm using my uh, onboard video uh, sound card, so it's a real tech high definition audio. Um, the big thing next is you want to make sure under reporting, uh, prompt me to log QSO. So automatically, whenever you make a QSO, it will automatically ask you if you'd like to log it and it inputs the information. The frequencies, uh, this is kind of shows you can change, go in and change the frequencies for these. The, but these are the main operating frequencies for these modes. Colors, there is one thing that I did change here. So uh, new call. This is actually unset by default, so I did check that. That way I can differentiate between um, uh, call signs I've already worked uh, when they're calling CQ versus ones that I haven't worked. Because I'd like to work the ones I haven't worked before. Um, other than that, on the main window here, you want to uh, hold TX frequency, auto sequence, which is automatically going to... Uh, automatic sequencing of TX messages based on received messages. So what that means is once you receive messages from somebody, it's automatically going to go through this list here and uh, choose the appropriate response. Call first. This is used when you're uh, calling CQ. Uh, whenever you call CQ, if somebody replies to you, it'll automatically choose the first person that replies to you and just go ahead and respond. So what happens here is this is the basic anatomy of a FK8 contact. So when call CQ here, right? So when somebody calls CQ, the other person will respond automatically with um, addressing them and then uh, listing their grid coordinate. So then somebody will give them, the, the next person will say, okay, here's your signal report. And then you'll reply with your signal report. And then you'll say 73, and then they'll say 73. Now this is in 15 second intervals, so you transmit for 15 seconds, then you get to receive for 15 seconds. They transmit for 15 seconds, you get to receive for 15 seconds. So it makes the contact super easy, and the software with these settings checked, it's automatically going to go ahead, and uh, once I choose a CQ on this side, it'll automatically, um, this is where this comes in. Once we start receiving signals, I guess I can go ahead and turn it on. You'll see them start coming in here. Now this is uh, kind of like the different frequencies of sound here. It's like the way that they distribute the bandwidth. Um, all of the the calls are only 50 hertz in intervals, so it takes up uh, very low bandwidth. So what you're seeing here is the different sections. Now I could manually like go ahead and just tune to this guy, or tune here, or tune here, and listen here. But uh, the software does all of this for us. So this is neat to look at to see if somebody's replying to uh, your CQ or somebody's, you can see that somebody's replying to your message. But uh, other than that, you really, uh, everything kind of takes place in the software with uh, what we got going on here. I don't know if it's going to work very well transmitting while I'm recording, but we're going to try it out. So the radio is going here, and it might play through my desktop audio. So what you're seeing on this side is a list of received messages. This is the received messages only on the frequency that you're listening to here, right? So I can erase these from here. I can hit erase here. I can erase these from here by right-clicking erase. As the messages come in per 15 second intervals, they'll be listed on the side over here. And every new section with the way that we have this set up will be separated by <clears throat> the barrier here that says 40 meters. So the only thing we need to do to make a contact is wait for a CQ that we want to reply to uh, pops up over here and we'll just double click on it. 
Okay, so there's no uh, there's no CQ message here. I could call CQ and wait for somebody to answer, but uh, in the meantime, while we're watching this, I'm going to pull up the grid tracker too, and also we'll reply to our CQ here if we get one. So this is from Echo Mary 20 again, and what you're seeing on this software suit here is or this software, the grid tracker. I can see who I'm messaging. Oh, you guys can't see it because the camera. So I can see. Here it's transmitting from here to the station in Texas. So that must be the, uh, the Whiskey 5 Delta Charlie Charlie. Now let's see here on the waterfall, I can see if I can see a reply or not, which I do not. Sometimes it's not always visible, but we'll wait and see. Oh yeah, so the, he did reply, and what you're seeing here, uh, the, per, uh, the, the dark color here, this is uh, his reply, and this is my TX that's happening now. So he sent me a signal report. I'm sending him a signal report. And what happens now is he replies to 73, and uh, it'll prompt me to um, log the contact in my software. And I can hit, go ahead and hit OK, and it'll automatically log it for me, and my transceiver will go ahead and transmit my 73 to him. So there we go. He, uh, We got his 73 message, and um, we uh, automatically have our QSO popped up here um, with the information that we need, or TX power, that we can change, uh, and we'll hit OK and log that contact. We just made a contact from Texas, Kentucky, and uh, we really didn't do much at all. I uh, know I talked a lot, but in reality, I double clicked a CQ message. We'll try it again. So this guy is actually literally about two states away, so unless somebody jumped onto it first, this is a definite contact. So now that we double clicked on it, the software does literally all the work for us. So we're just going to sit back and uh, let it go. Alright, so we got his signal report. We're sending our signal report. He'll send a 73. We'll log to QSO. We'll send our 73. And there's another contact. Literally all we did was double click. So I forgot to um, add how to call CQ into the video, so this is edited back in. So you have this software running here, and this is where the waterfall actually really does come into play here. So when you look at the waterfall, the, these sections right here, like we went over before, is where we're transmitting and receiving. So everything in the waterfall these blocks are separated by the 15 seconds and the yellow here is pretty much the data where somebody's transmitting so if you want to call CQ you want to first and this is what the guy did before this is how he messed up he chose a frequency already in progress we uh, we choose a, um, a blank part of the spectrum here we control click it like one more we're sure nothing there's no activity going on and I'm gonna I'm gonna go down here at the first part because this looks pretty clear. And uh, what we're gonna do is go back on the software and we're gonna hit uh, TX6. And we're gonna enable TX. And the next call uh, it should transmit CQ on the radio on this frequency, which is what we're doing here. So the radio is transmitting CQ here on the first block. And uh, if we're lucky, somebody will reply here soon. So we called CQ. And uh, if somebody replies, we'll start seeing it here on the waterfall, which that's what the yellow is that you're seeing there. That means somebody's replying, or they're calling CQ on top of us. Since we have call first enabled here, as soon as we see that somebody's replied, it's automatically going to select our next message, which is sending them the signal report. Somebody did reply. So we'll just give them just a moment here. Um, the radio a moment to transmit and we can also see on grid tracker where we're um, replying to and it looks like it is a uh, state in South Carolina or the it's South Carolina state so there we go we just logged the uh, QSO from calling CQ the really cool part is I don't know what that sound was. Anyways, the really cool part is the radio will automatically go ahead and go back to calling CQ for us 
once the Earth at 73 is issued. So we literally don't have to do anything except for hit OK on the uh, on the software. Anyways, super cool. And that's how you call CQ. Just make sure the frequency is not in use first. So, as you can imagine, or as you've heard, especially if you're watching this video, FT8 is a controversial mode in ham radio. Uh, I believe, personally, that's because uh, as younger hams that are experimenting and using these types of modes, um, it kind of offends some of the people that have been around for a little bit longer because, you know, back, back, you know, years and years ago, the only way to do these type of contacts over all these large distances really was, was Morse code. And uh, I feel like that inclusiveness of being able to use Morse code to make long distance contacts and now having a software that does it much more efficiently has kind of... Um, piss some people off which you know I can understand that in some ways uh, and I can understand how double clicking and then making a contact automatically kinda would you know be I guess offensive uh, especially after people went through a lot of work to make sure that they learn Morse code and work very hard with a uh, you know c uh, single sideband just to make contact so I can understand why that would be, uh, you know, controversial, but the thing is, with ham radio, there's less and less young people getting into it, and uh, I think it's digital stuff like this, especially in my opinion, as a younger guy, that is going to kind of save the hobby, because honestly, I don't, besides making contacts, I don't feel the need to spin the dial on single sideband. And just start talking to some old geezer about and chewing the rag. I, I mean, I can do it for a little while, but there's only so much I have to talk about. You know, for me, this is it. I want to make contacts. I want to get awards. I want to, I want to do these type of things. Speaking of which, here's uh, Italy. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can make it over there. But we're late jumping on it, so we'll see what happens. But anyways, I want to. This is me. I want to log the contacts. I'm not really interested in, in talking about your bladder infection for 20 or 30 minutes or whatever it be. But uh, anyways, I just want to show you guys FT8, if you haven't seen it, how I've got my software set up, how it's done, and uh, really kind of what I've been up to lately. So went over all of this. The next video is probably going to be PSK31. Uh, because I have been working on that, making some contacts there, which honestly I like PSK31 more uh, because it feels a little bit more interactive, uh, and um, it's you can work pretty pretty far distances on it as well. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments about your opinion on FTA. You know what what you think about it. If it's saving the hobby, if it's uh, well, you know, just give me your opinion. And make sure you subscribe because there's going to be a lot of cool stuff on the way.